Geocentrism Explains Morning Meteors by Malcolm Bowden It has been claimed that there is one observation that geocentrists cannot answer. This is that the best time to see meteors or shooting stars is just before dawn when they are most frequent. Before we deal with this criticism, let us first clarify certain definitions and facts. A meteoroid is a hard object in space that is less than one meter in diameter. Above that size they are called asteroids. When the meteoroid enters the atmosphere above the Earth at very high speed, the friction with the air makes the meteoroid glow brightly and it is called a meteor or shooting star. Often they burn up before they reach the Earth's surface. But if they do survive and hit the Earth, then they are called a meteorite. These meteoroids are in space and are travelling in a wide range of directions at speeds of about 40 kilometers per second. So they are hitting the atmosphere from all different directions, even during the day when they cannot be seen by eye. With the heliocentric model, the Earth is traveling around the Sun at 30 kilometers per second. So meteoroids traveling in the same direction as the Earth are only hitting the Earth at 10 kilometers per second. However, those travelling in the opposite direction to the Earth will hit the atmosphere at 70 kilometres per second, and therefore more will be visible just before dawn. From the Earth's point of view, the Sun goes round the Earth once every 24 hours. We show it when it is midday over the Greenwich Meridian. Let us imagine that we can see a very distant star on the same line as the Sun. When they have both travelled round the Earth in one day, the star will have moved slightly faster than the Sun and will be over the Greenwich Meridian 3.94 minutes before the Sun. This is known as the sidereal day of 23 hours 56.04 minutes. When the Sun is over the meridian at midday, it will complete the solar day of 24 hours, but the star will be 3.94 minutes further round. After a full year of 365 and a quarter days, the star will have travelled a full circle and be over the meridian at the same time as the sun. Thus, relative to the sun, all the stars move a complete circle during the year. From a heliocentric viewpoint, why meteors are seen best just before dawn is easily explained. Let us add the dust tail of a comet that has passed the sun. As the Earth moves around the sun, spinning anticlockwise, it will hit the meteoroids of the comet's dust for a spectacular display of shooting stars. And they will be most visible just before dawn when that part of the Earth is on the leading edge. Before that time, an observer on the Earth will be sheltered by the Earth, but as the Earth turns, he will see them best just before sunrise, and after that, they are invisible as the daylight dawns. Can geocentrists give an explanation using their model of the universe? Yes, they can. Let us start with the same midday diagram with the meteoroids in the trail of a comet passing near the Sun. In the geocentric model, the stars and planets are all centered on the Sun, and the planets have their own rotations around the Sun. But stars, Sun, and planets all rotate around the Earth once per day as they are embedded in the super-dense ether. In this sequence, we show the daily rotation of the whole of the universe around the Earth. Notice that at no stage does the Earth cross the path of the cometary meteoroids. After each 24 hours, 
when the sun is again over the Greenwich meridian, you will remember that the stars and planets have all moved clockwise nearly four minutes further around the sun. Now let us look at the yearly rotation of the stars and meteoroids around the sun. The planets have their individual anti-clockwise rotation around the sun, but as we showed in the sidereal year, the stars and meteoroids slowly move around the sun clockwise by almost four minutes every day. This sequence shows the daily steps of the stars and meteoroids around the sun like snapshots taken when the sun is over the Greenwich meridian at midday. Gradually the meteoroids from the comet's trail reach the Earth and we have exactly the same regular spectacular display of shooting stars as in the heliocentric model. They are again best seen just before dawn. So we see that it is not the Earth that is being swept through the meteors as in the heliocentric model, but it is the meteors that are being swept past the stationary Earth. Furthermore, astronomers are finding increasing evidence that the Earth really is at the centre of the universe. Thus, yet again, the geocentrist's explanation is as valid as the heliocentric explanation, but it's far superior because it has the great advantage that four secular experiments, the Michelson-Morley, the Michelson-Gale, Sanyak and Aries failure, all fully support the geocentric model. The result of the Michelson-Morley experiment showed that we were not travelling round the Sun at 30 kilometres per second. Einstein turned this result on its head with his ridiculous relativity theory and simply said that there was no ether. The other three experiments are never taught at universities. They are 1. The Michelson-Gale experiment that showed that the ether was passing across the surface of the Earth once every 24 hours. Secondly, Aries failure. This experiment proved that it was the moving starlight carried by the rotating ether that was passing across the stationary Earth. And thirdly, the Sanyak experiment. This proved that there was an ether, thus demolishing relativity theory. And I have made separate videos on these three experiments explaining how they work. In addition, the important Barbour and Bertotti paper also provides a full quantitative mathematical analysis of the geocentric model. I have a copy of this paper on my website at www.mbowden.info forward slash barbour.htm I have put this on my website as it was one of two papers omitted from a full list of Barbour's works. Clearly, orthodox scientists do not want it to be read because it completely contradicts their dearly held heliocentric propaganda. In this way, the fact that the Earth is at the centre of the universe is deliberately hidden from the general public because if it were universally accepted, people would realise that the Earth is very special and that the Bible is right when it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the Earth. I hope you found that interesting. Thank you for listening.